Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Ram. You might be thinking this plane looks a bit weird, but is not that abnormal. However, when I get into flight, you will see that this craft is very abnormal and has received a lot of attention recently. NASA's AD-1 starts off fairly normally, like many other planes, but it has a unique advantage to its capabilities in flight that unfortunately cannot be fully replicated in KSP, however, I can still demonstrate a working model in KSP, so you can see we're getting off the ground just barely. Unfortunately, due to the nature of this craft, it does have a little bit of trouble getting off the ground, and you can probably already tell why. There's a giant hinge in the middle of this wing, and the reason there's a giant hinge in the middle of this wing is because this wing can do this. And you're immediately seeing the problems with doing this in KSP, which is that in KSP, the wobbliness of the hinge makes this very not okay very quickly. I'm barely keeping it from falling into the water, and if I don't restore the wing to its normal position soon, things will go badly. And even in the normal position, it doesn't fly very well. I'm going to go ahead and throttle down just a little bit to get our uh, get our craft back under control a little bit better and get us on a better heading here. Now the roll is oscillating slightly but this is manageable as long as you're careful and uh, the number one thing that I did that you should not do is transition this wing quickly. I think I'm actually going to turn the transition rate way lower than it is because and you know what, let's also not transition all the way, because as you can see, that caused immediate issues. This craft works in real life, and it has the same stability problems, but for a different reason. In KSP, it's because the hinge is uh, very floppy. In real life, it's because the... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? In real life, it's because of the asymm asymmetries involved. But the intent in this is to make the advantages of a swing wing, or a wing sweep angle, without the disadvantages of having a swept wing. And wow, this it really starts to lose control in KSP once I go past about 45 degrees. This is just like the real one, it can go to 60 degrees. You can see it's very unstable and uh, doesn't want to perform well at all, but I'm quite happy with it as far as it being a relatively realistic replica. Uh, like I said, I'm going to turn the traverse rate down before I upload it. But now, I'm going to cut to showing you this working in real life. So I was explaining to Kai why NASA tried to build a plane like this, and the benefits that this could potentially have, and the downsides. Also. It flies. Surprisingly well. Do it again. Oh my god, you're still recording. Do it again. Oh, I didn't quite adjust it enough that time, so it still sinks. Okay, one more. Okay. I might have overcompensated that time. Oh, nearly perfect. Nice. And also, if you want more information on the real-life version of this craft, I highly recommend the channel that I've linked to in the description, or rather, the video that I've linked to in the description. I believe it's on the channel Real Engineering. It's one of those channels. It's an educational YouTube channel that covers very interesting things, and they did a video on this aircraft relatively recently. I forget exactly how recent, but uh, pretty recent considering that that's why all the KSP players recently have decided that uh, they need to make their variants of this particular aircraft. For now though, I'm going to demonstrate that you can safely land this craft again, even after its horrible instabilities. And I'm also going to show you why, unlike in most of my craft, I did not throttle up to full with this particular plane. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and disable the SAS, because right now the SAS will try to kill us. And I'm just going to try and get us heading vaguely back towards the KSC. Definitely not going to try to land on the island runway, because I know that that is a fool's mission. 
and I'm also going to show you that we are now in the danger speed, where if I enable SAS you will see things happen horribly. I'm not sure if this will actually continue to fly okay without SAS, or if the same issues will happen just at a higher speed than I'm at right now. Okay, now that we're pretty close to level, I'm going to turn on SAS to show you what happens when you have SAS enabled on this craft at high velocity. Nothing at all, until you try to maneuver even slightly. So I'm going to pull up just a little bit, and actually not maneuvering slightly so much as engaging the roll at all. The roll will start to wiggle and will not stop wiggling, and the result of the roll wiggling will keep the ASS in this slightly unlocked mode where it'll just continually pitch down, which obviously doesn't help anything, and the only way to fix this is to disengage SAS. In any case, I am going to try to land this, like I said, but we're clearly going way too fast right now, which is why I'm trying to slow us down. I'm sure the real thing had speed brakes. I hope the real thing had speed brakes, but uh, we do not, so I'm going to have to deal with that for the moment. I'm going to go ahead and engage the landing gear. In real life, you would not do this. It would destroy them. <laughs> but uh, in KSB, it's just extra drag to help me slow down. And you can see we're engaging some of that roll wobble, although it is easier to control at lower speeds. Speaking of control, uh, you might notice that our uh, our ability to maneuver is very low in this particular craft. So that may cause some issues coming in for a landing here. Hopefully none too bad, but uh, we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and engage the brakes. Ooh, I'm not going to pull up in time. And they dead it. Well, so much for that being a viable plane in KSP. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in space.